Patchum in Terrace is how the papacy is going to operate from now on, post-Vatican Council II. It establishes and defines what the person is and that the person is a ward of the state and it is the state's responsibility to protect and provide for that person. Now, Nicholas might even want to jump in here. We're running out of time. But the person is not you. The person is a creation of the Vatican. And it is paper, essentially. It's created when you're born. Your mother went to the hospital, delivered you on a delivery table. The doctor put your footprint on a document called of, of the the uh, certificate of live birth okay then that certificate of live birth went from the administrator of the hospital to the state and the state took it put it in a file that is that piece of paper representing you becomes property of the state then the state issues a birth certificate. That goes back to the administrator of the hospital. The, ho the administrator of the hospital gives that to your mother. That's a receipt. Thank you very much. We've taken your live progeny and put it in our warehouse. And you, here's the receipt. Now, naturally, the mother decides, not knowing what has just happened, takes the baby home, educates, finances, uh, and cares for the child all of her life, but the baby belongs to the state. And the state governs its affairs. It's under the complete control, just as lost property becomes a ward of the state. It becomes the state's business to take care of lost property. Kind of like a ship lost at sea. And unless the parents go to the state and claim that child, or later in life the child grows to be of legal age and claims himself to be alive, that child is regarded as dead to the world and a permanent ward of the state. No one ever does this. We're never told we can. We never, we're never told we should. And so every living man and literally wanders through this world conducting his own affairs, but he does so at the indulgence of the state. And at any time during that child's life, if the parent is regarded as a heretic by the state, or by the church rather, and then implemented by the state, the state can come in and take the child in custody and can arrest the parents for bringing up the child a heretic. And they can use any pretense for that. Abuse. Uh, you name it. Any, any justification at all, the state can literally come and take physical possession of the child and put it in someone else's custody because it belongs to the state. Did you know you were state property? I didn't know I was state property until a couple years ago. But that's what Rome created. You see, if one creates something then one is the Lord over it. God created the heavens and the earth and all that in them is, and he is Lord of all of it. But if the papacy, the God of this world, creates something known as the person, he becomes the natural Lord over it. And as long as we continue to identify ourselves with it, then we have voluntarily submitted to the papacy's authority. And that means we have voluntarily uh, uh, submitted to the civil authority, which is the administrator for the papacy. Many of you are hearing this for the first time and think Tom has absolutely lost his mind. No, the papacy has lost its mind. The civil authority has lost its mind, and we are just finding out about it. And you're going to find out Tom Fress isn't the only one that knows about it. 
and there are many that are far more educated on these lines than I am, and I will allow them to speak at whatever opportunity they choose to come on the broadcast and speak about it. But the Bible says we are all born in trespasses and sins. We are all born dead in trespasses and sins, and we must be reborn. The Vatican is playing on those words. And so when we are born, we are taken into their possession, determined as dead, until we come forward and proclaim our living status and take upon ourselves our own identity, our living identity, and literally retire the person, the piece of paper, to the one who created it, the papacy and the state. <sighs> the truth is stranger than fiction. But after all, we're dealing with Satan. Satan who, has no, Satan who has no power over us unless we yield to him. And Satan has used the papacy to literally claim us as dead. Already dead until we claim our living man status. And he does it with the help of the papacy and the civil power. Do you own a piece of paper, driver's license, birth certificate, uh, dri a driver's license with your name in all capital letters? That's not you. That's the person that the papacy created through the state. And as long as you continue to identify yourself with it, you're confessing yourself to be dead and in need of papal and civil control. You're submitted to civil jurisdiction, civil possession. And then all the laws that they pass, which governs the person, you are subject to. And if those laws contradict God's holy law, you must obey the civil law. And that's how Romans chapter 13 is now interpreted in the churches. We must obey the civil law. When in fact, Romans chapter 13 describes the civil law as the servant of God, not the servant of the Pope. Have I broadened your understanding a little bit? As Father Drew Christensen, S.J., former editor of America, told me, Pachaman Terrace is a linchpin of modern Vatican diplomacy. You are a subject of Vatican diplomacy. It is the document for the church's political reality, said Christensen. It established political theology on a cosmopolitan basis. Now, the root of, now, the root of everything is the person which the state is responsible to protect. Patchum in Terrace really launched the church's involvement in the human rights movement. Simply telling you, after Vatican Council II and the publishing of this encyclical, you are now papal authority. He determines your rights, and he determines your destiny, he writes the laws under which you obey in the, uh, the state of uh, the, the, the civil authority and uh, your human rights are defined and warded and removed by the papacy through the hand of the state. This really constitutes the open declaration of a global church-state union. Patchum and Terrace is a factual declaration of the new world order. It took place at Vatican Council II at the height of futurism, at the height of 
nuclear annihilation, Cuban Missile Crisis, and every other kind of crisis, even during the time of the Vietnam War when the papacy was running a papal crusade against the Buddhists, and nobody told us. Our government doesn't regard you as a living person, a living man. It regards you as a person, a corporate fiction created by the Vatican. That makes the Vatican your creator, doesn't it? Well, they just used the word creator above here just a little bit, didn't it? The creator stamped man's innermost being with an order revealed to man by his conscience. The Pope's not talking about the God of gods, the God of the Bible. He's talking about himself. He's the creator of the person. The world's creator has stamped man's innermost being with an order revealed to man by his conscience, and his conscience insists on preserving it. The Pope went on to list the numerous rights that naturally belong to all humans from the right of bodily integrity. You have no bodily integrity unless the Pope guarantees it, and he can take it away. Whatever you receive from the Pope, he can take away to the rights of free speech and freedom of worship. You have the right of free speech as long as it doesn't offend the Pope. You have the right of freedom of worship as long as it doesn't offend the Pope. It's all explained right here in these three chapters. And it says, before April of 63, President Kennedy steadfastly avoiding any, uh, 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 giving any hint that he listened to the Pope but Patchum and Terrace moved him to speak, quote, as a Catholic, I'm proud of it, said Kennedy, and as an American, I have learned from it, unquote. So the papacy, the Pope's man in Washington, D.C., in the White House, was proud of what the Vatican produced, Patchum and Terrace enslaving every American, making them the property of the state. And the state becomes the manager of the person in behest of the Pope. And what did Boniface VIII say? It is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman pontiff. And that's the end to which they have been working that is what they have accomplished in the new world order. A global restoration of the old world order. Protestantism is dead. Unless God revives it. God hasten the day.